hey before you watch this video uh coming up go to the link right down below it's challenge.com and you can fill out a bracket for march mascot madness which is going to kick off on march 2nd over on twitch.tv slash shaunasaurus rex do it it's going to be a lot of fun enjoy the video what's up everybody welcome to episode number 57 of week in review my name is sean and on this week's show we're going to talk about alita battle angel isn't it romantic a limited edition favorite makes a return and we'll look forward to this week's new releases first up on this week's show is alita battle angel which is one of the two movies i pointed out last week that i was going to go see and i successfully did i saw both of them and we're going to talk about both of them on this week's episode um unfortunately well not unfortunately Poor planning led to it just being a movie heavy week this week. So next week we'll feature Crackdown 3 and Far Cry New Dawn. I've played, um, I've completed Far Cry, uh, I'm sorry. I've completed um, Crackdown 3 as of recording, but I'm going to hold my thoughts for next week just because I thought the show would get a little bit packed uh, if I did two games and two movies. That was also a lot of time that I, need, that I needed to dedicate to all that sort of stuff. Um, so we'll start with uh, the movies, and next week will be a little more games heavy. Gives you, ladies and gentlemen who are watching the show, a little more time to catch up on that stuff. Alita comes to us from director Robert Rodriguez, who made a bunch of movies that I actually quite enjoy. My first, um, like discovery that wouldn't count as what it would be my first uh exposure that's what i'm looking for of him would have been uh the spy kids trilogy or the first two spy kids movies i think the third one came out a little late that's neither here nor there spy kids was my first introduction to him um and then saw stuff like sin city which i didn't really like initially but over or after repeat viewings i really actually enjoy um and then grindhouse with planet terror which is a movie that i just totally love and then machete machete kills and uh hopefully machete kills in space because they like teased it anyway the enough about my own pipe dreams so when i saw the trailer for alita about a year ago or so i was very excited because i like mahershala ali i like robert rodriguez as i was talking about and i like christoph waltz uh, who's won two academy awards for best supporting actor in django unchained and uh inglorious bastards so like uh, it's a pretty good stacked cast i'm happy to report that i do like the movie overall even if it does have some weirdness to it um i think it has an odd pacing structure it spends a lot of the first chunk of the movie uh setting up the world basically it starts with uh christoph waltz's character finding alita in a scrapyard and then giving her like a body and then introducing her and the audience to the world that currently or they currently live in which takes place 360 some odd years after a thing called the fall which that aspect of the movie comes into play but i don't think it comes into play enough and that's kind of another one of the weird like plot structure i don't know i it's weird because i don't know if it's necessarily like a plot structure issue or if it's just something where there's too much of one thing but not enough of the other i think that the romantic storyline that takes place through most of the movie is a little one it's like pretty formulaic but two it's kind of unnecessary if like oh you're really spending a lot of time on this when you have other more interesting things that you can be talking about specifically in regards to mahershala ali's character who doesn't have a whole lot to do mahershala ali is a great actor and he is unfortunately kind of wasted in this movie. He has a couple scenes where he's like really cool. And then there's a lot of it where it's like, you're kind of not doing anything that's terribly pertinent to the story. And that's like kind of a culmination of it. Like the romance story doesn't need to be in there. You could cut that out. And I don't think anything would really be missing. One of the other odd points in this movie is a, the sport called motorball. And it seems like it's a really important plot point And they like, they use it to introduce the love interest and a couple of his friends who play parts throughout the rest of the movie. And it feels like a natural, like, um, extension in the world of like, Oh, here's this sport and the way it's shown like it makes sense a thing throws a ball out people chase it around you have to put the ball in the in the score tube i don't really know what the hell it was called it's just like it's literally like a wall and then like a tube sticks out of it and you put the ball in it but it doesn't make sense because the way it's shown initially is in like a very confined area and it's like do you have to make a certain number of rounds before you can score because if you just pick up the ball and score the game will last like 30 seconds but then they introduce the fact that 
the uh there's like a pro version of this like they're like that's like the big thing that happens and so when they go you're like okay well maybe i'll figure it out a little bit more each time they show the motorball in like the professional way some other plot point gets in the way and so you never understand the rules of the sport but it's also weird because you never have to understand the rules of the sport because it's like simultaneously really important and completely irrelevant at all at the exact same time and it's super bizarre the other odd aspect of this is the bounty hunter storyline where like it, the way it's introduced is interesting and it triggers the memories for alita to figure out who she was before uh before she woke up where she is now which is you know 300 years after the fall and that's like an interesting way to do that is like it felt very natural it also introduces a few characters one of them is incredibly odd and as i was watching the movie in the theater i was like this is playing like the weirdest knockoff joker i have ever seen and it, it's super weird he's in the hair for like 30 seconds and boy his performance was committed because it was like he walked in he's like i'm gonna come in i'm gonna nail my lines i'm gonna make this character memorable and to be fair actor who was in that role you did maybe not in the best way but you made the character memorable uh for all 17 seconds he was on the screen the sequence also does a good job of taking a situation where you think you know where it's going and kind of putting enough of a twist on it and be like oh okay this like makes more sense but the way that that plot furthers doesn't really work it's like here's the bounty hunter and then here are the rules and then the rules are going to be very conveniently used later on down the road and it's going to eliminate a character entirely and it's just so like it's such an easy answer and such a like get out of jail free card and it's a weird thing where there's just like there's a lot of characters and they all kind of start to put the pieces of where they're supposed to be but it doesn't quite work like you could have cut two or three of these characters out or maybe even change the dynamics of some of the other characters to kind of eliminate this problem um there's i mean there are characters that could be completely cut from this movie and you would never know that they were gone i know it sound like i'm kind of complaining and i even though i said like i did like the movie there are like some really i think there are some like glaring oddities with it i don't know it's weird because like i don't necessarily know if they're problems or if they're just things that for me they just didn't gel correctly but they weren't as egregious an error as you may have might maybe think they might be or i don't know it's kind of weird but the movie also ends in a super weird spot as well where it's building and building and i'm sitting there in the theater and i'm like man this movie has must have like another like hour to it but when i th was thinking that it was at like the hour and a half mark and i knew that this movie was only about two hours long i was like they gotta start wrapping stuff up at some point and it builds and builds and builds and then it puts some of the pieces together and you start to see kind of where they're going with it and then you really start to see where they're going to go with it and then it just ends and it's the weirdest things so i was like oh okay here we go we're going to get this final sequence and we're going to do this and it's going to lead to that and there's going to be like another 20 minutes and then she does like a thing and then it's like cuts to black directed by robert rodriguez and i was like what a bizarre place for this movie to end it makes sense if this was like a world building first movie and there's a sequel like in development or maybe even completed i haven't looked that far into it um and like i would go see a sequel to this movie i don't necessarily think um it's you know four or five days after i saw the movie and i'm already like losing plot points and stuff like that so it's not really sticking with me in any particular way but i enjoyed it enough to be like I'd go again like I'd not to this again like a second viewing but I would go to a sequel of it just to be clear I don't know it's a cool like sci-fi mashup sort of thing I don't really know there's like a romance element that's like too much there's like the elements of a sports movie but you don't understand the rules of the sport and it's kind of a weird like hodgepodge and mismatch of different things there's some cool action sequences I like Delita as a character it was a fun movie. I like Robert Rodriguez's stuff, so I kind of, like, I'm more inclined. He seems like a guy who just makes movies that he wants to see. Um, and even if this doesn't necessarily feel like it has a ton of personality to it, uh, I thought it was worth viewing. The other movie this week is in the Pleasant Surprise category, and it is Isn't It Romantic, uh, which is a movie I figured I would like because I like Rebel Wilson and Adam Devine is in it as well. Um, but I wasn't prepared for how much I liked it. And I think it's just a 
it's like a good hearted, goofy comedy movie about a lady who uh, really hates romantic comedies, like despises them and then ends up uh, in like after an accident ends up inside a romantic comedy. One of the things I think this movie does a really good job of is establishing the characters, their dynamics and the world that Rebel Wilson's character lives in before she um, has her uh accident i guess would be the term to use she runs into a pole i think it's in the trailers oh sorry if that's a spoiler um the the way she it sets up her apartment life and it sets up her home life and things aren't maybe in the greatest of spots the way it sets up her character dynamics uh with her assistant which is really great and with adam devine is interesting as well um i i like the way that she can articulate why she doesn't like romantic comedies why they annoy her why they frustrate her you also get to see that she's a little bit hesitant with her job as an architect she has good ideas but she doesn't necessarily have the the confidence to present at like a board meeting and then when she does go to the board meeting she's referred to as a coffee girl simply because she's a woman and that like was one of those things where i was like god why are you why are you a dick about this like she just wants to present her thing for the parking garage like that's all she wants to do and then the accident happens and one of the things that i noticed when i was watching the movie was how much i liked the way they changed the sets to uh the sets and the color palettes to more mimic like an idealistic um way that people want to view like in this case new york city where like everything's bright and colorful and her wardrobe changes and her apartment's super big the movie works uh, a lot of the tropes in and kind of plays with them and makes fun of them in a way that's endearing and it's fun watching this character who really hates where she is have to try and game the system to try and get out of it and i thought that was really interesting it does a really good job too at pushing you in a direction to make you think you know what's going to happen and then changing just enough to throw off and actually have a better message than most romantic comedies actually have and the way that um this whole experience for her uh translates back into her like real day-to-day -day life is really really nice and i don't know it's just it's a movie that I went into with like moderate expectations of like it'll be a goofy movie that I will think is good I like Rebel Wilson but for me to walk out with being like man that was a really fun movie and I would watch that again and I really liked it I think I think for the most part the humor works there's some jokes that like don't really land I didn't actually find myself laughing at Rebel Wilson's joke jokes all that much I found myself laughing more at the random aside stuff that kind of was peppered in throughout the movie that stuff kind of clicked with me a little bit more um but overall i thought it was a really good movie it's a short and sweet movie that feels like as cynical or angry about romantic comedies as it is it understands the appeal of them and it understands how to take the tropes or the stereotypes of those movies and kind of play with them in a way that felt fun and interesting and rewarding when the movie was over it's a movie that clicked with me in a way that i wasn't expecting and i had a really good time with it about this time last year i reviewed a very specific type of donut and i wanted it to come back year round the hostess hasn't done that yet but they did bring them back we're talking about strawberry covered nope that's wrong frosted strawberry mini donuts i'm so excited about them i forgot the title <laughs> The problem is I bought these about a week and a half ago because I saw somebody at GameStop had them. And I was like, oh my gosh, they did it. They brought it back. And he was like, I don't know what you're talking about. You need to be clear. And I'm like, the donuts, the donuts, they're back. And he's like, yes, they're over at Safeway. So I hustled my bustle. I ran over to the Safeway. I bought a bag. I thought, you know what? I'll save them for a week in review. I'll bring them back. It's going to be a good time. Everybody will be excited. Probably just me, but hey, that's how it happens or works, whatever. Who cares? stumbling over the words i'm excited there's a bunch of sugar in this bag it's like 8 30 at night on a monday so that's gonna end real well um as i was running up the stairs to uh come and film this show i looked at the back of the bag and these expired last friday so uh not only is this the only bag i'm gonna get this year but they're expired well they're past the best buy date not the store the b-e-s-t-b-y um is that going to stop me from eating them absolutely not let's try them out a lot of air in this bag by the way a little worried that it staled out the donuts or the donuts but we'll see how that works oh yeah they're back baby Oops. 
Hopefully that doesn't fall off. Oh, that's going to fall off. There we have them. They're back. The chocolate covered goodness. Oh. <laughs> Man. Really wish they'd bring these back all year round. I would buy a lot more donuts if they did. Oh. I don't think you're going to be able to find these anywhere. I don't know if you're going to want to find them. Uh, the bag I have is already expired, but that's okay. I'm still going to enjoy this one bag of frosted strawberry donuts. Until next year, my sweet, beautiful donuts. Finally, on this week's show, we'll look forward to this week's new releases. Uh, nothing on Blu-ray. Fighting with My Family is in theaters. And then Dirt Rally 2.0. If you buy the deluxe edition for $80, you get a uh, four-day early access period. So that releases on Friday. Anthem is out, but I don't care about that game. Thank you so much for watching this week's episode of Weekend Review. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, scroll on down, hit that little subscribe button, and then hit that bell so it'll notify you when new videos post. You can scroll down a little bit more and leave a comment. Just like Debbie did that says, Loved watching Starsky and Hutch in the 70s. The car was awesome, and we'll have to try the Oreos. Let me know what you think of the Oreos. Funny story. Um, when Starsky and Hutch was out originally, like on DVD in 2004, the movie... I thought about for years, for like probably like 12 to 13 years, thought about watching that show and many times was at Hastings, rip in peace, uh, was at Hastings and was like, man, I should buy seasons of, seasons of this on DVD and I never did. And then I looked at them on Amazon and it's like $20 for the whole series. So maybe, maybe 15 years later, I'll finally watch it. Of course, if it's waited 15 years, I'm sure it can wait. Uh, several more. Ashley says, try the Oreos again after you're feeling better. They may be like milk for you. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, which most of you I would assume don't, when I'm sick, milk doesn't taste right. And the reason I know that is because I drink an absurd amount of milk. So as soon as I know, like as soon as I'm like drinking milk, I'm like, this doesn't taste right. I like all the red flags go off. I start yelling. I hit the panic button. I say, red alert, everyone. Red alert. I'm getting sick. It's going to be a big deal and an annoyance for the next however long I'm sick. So maybe we'll try those Oreos again. They may or may not be sitting just off camera. After you're done leaving a comment just like those fine folks did, you can head over to challenge, that's C-H-A-L-L-O-N-G-E dot com slash March Mascot Madness 1 to fill out your bracket for the March Mascot Madness tournament that is I am running in March Madness NCAA 2005 using just mascot teams. There are, going, there are 64 teams in. We're going to run it just like March Madness. It's going to be a good time. That is going to tip off. I keep saying kickoff, and I, every time I'm editing, I'm like, you idiot, you need to say tip off because that's a basketball thing, and it makes way more sense. So it's me with headphones just yelling at myself, yelling at my past self, like, you idiot, fix it. So I did. Uh, tip off on March 2nd over on twitch.tv slash Rex, and you can watch all of the games there are like 63 of them it's going to be a lot of fun and if all goes well you'll actually be able to catch the videos on demand right here on youtube so if you miss a day or a game uh you can catch them there but go fill out a bracket it's gonna be a lot of fun i can't wait to crown myself the champion and always be sure to check back every tuesday for more week in review we'll see you next week